inclusiveness and what did Prabhupada want out of Kirtan, okay? And so we're gonna bring you back to maybe the old days. And since some of you are not around in the old days, uh, we're just uh, helping you to understand maybe what it was like and go through some of the statements that Prabhupada delivered to us um, you know, areas of you know a message that that would be you know relevant to even today. Okay, so I I'm, I want to proudly present this. Some of you have maybe received this book already. It's by His Holiness Jayadwaita Maharaj, and it's called Chirla Prabhupada's Kirtan Standards. It's a handbook, and anybody knows Maharaj. He throws bombs out there, you know? <laughs> and he's very right-wingish. And that's okay, we need that, because there's a lot of left-wingers in our uh, in every community, and you need the right-wingers to make the bird fly. <laughs> okay? So that's important, you know? <clears throat> I remember the story of Jitaya, you know, he got de-winged. One wing went off when he was fighting in the air with Ravana, and that was pretty much the end of it, you know? You can only go so long with one wing, and then you're you're gone. But just you need the two wings to move, and we are a movement, so we must be moving, right? So that's the point we like to make. Um, this book, which I believe is available in uh, New Jersey, I got to find that out at one of the temples, Central Jersey Temple. They have boxes of them. There's 26 of these, hardbound, beautiful. Uh, pages, a little over 200. It's an easy read, and uh, it's good guidelines is what it is. And uh, I've noticed myself that, well, I'll just give you an example that he gives in the book. Most of you chant Japa, right? And how many of you were told that, say, uh, between each round you chant Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Abhita Gadana Shri Vasani Gaur Bhakti Vrinda. Have you been taught that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, he never taught us that. <laughs> Prabhupada never taught us that. It's not that it's wrong. And that people do this on the head beam. Well, when I first heard those kind of messages, I thought, mm -hmm. this is like a different fist you know? <laughs> So. People, and, and of course the response will be, well, that's the way I'm, what I was taught. And or how long have you been doing for the last 20 years or 30 years? I think I'm not great. But if you check it out, there's no evidence that Prabhupada ever told us to do the Panchatapra in between the rounds <coughs> on the beads. So uh, the point I'm liking to make here is that whatever is set as a kind of a standard gets habit forming and a pattern is followed. Someone gets an idea and uh, it might be not a bad idea, but it just gets to be habit. And then we think, oh, this is the standard now. Like um, another pet peeve I have uh, that happens in our temples, and you can think about this, I'm not here to change rules in this regard. After the RT, or when the RT is going on, the Pajari gives the flower after it's offered to their lordships to someone out there. They'll grab it and then they they go through this, okay, the pecking order um, of who's the Swami here? And if there isn't one, who is the oldest person or who is around the longest? Well, I know that there are two devotees, and one came two days later, so I better give the one who came two days later. And then, and, then, and then the flower goes around, it goes up people's noses, and they have COVID or whatever else is there, and it goes around. But in the early days, we didn't really do that, you know? so. What did we do? Uh, the, the flower would be handed to a senior person, and that senior person will give it to a newcomer, you know, someone who needs that little bit extra attention. So you understand how, how habits uh, take place, you know, and, uh, and it could be damaging. So we want to set some standards. Well, we don't want, they are already there. And if you look at the 17th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Divisions of Faith, talks a lot about uh, Krishna's delivering the message about um, how not to do things uh, you know, like capriciously or whimsically. There are some standards. And so that's what we're dealing with here. And I just want to say, if we all do things in a certain kind of way, 
like moving together, uh, like, like a wheat field with the wind blowing. It was so nice. Isn't that what happens in Idaho? Yeah, right. It's kind of the wind comes and all the, everything goes this, and then a current comes and it's so beautiful. You know, instead of you know looking a little bit, you know, like every of them is their own thing. Mind you, what we're going to say rules are important, but there are occasions when we can let her rip and let your hang out, hair hang out. You know, if you understand what I'm saying, the expression. There are moments or times which is appropriate for being a little bit creative, and but at least in the temples, it's good to set some standards. And some of those standards have been set by the Islam leaders, and, um, and we'll go through some of that, okay? So this is gonna be a visual experience, and um, I, I'm hoping we, we have one hour to pack it all in. I don't think it's possible, but Let's try the best we can. Is that okay? Yes. 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 Fist bump. Okay. <laughs> okay. Themes. Today's workshop will cover two themes. And what are they? Well, this is going to my uh, trusty uh, assistant. Let's hear it from you. <laughs> what would Prabhupada want? What, what did he teach us? This is what we need to be informed about, right? And number two? Try to establish inclusivity. Make people feel involved, be part of it. I think, I'm sure you've been in, in the kirtans where someone's leading the kirtan there in a harmony and their eyes are closed and they're in their little bubble of their own room. <laughs> and then uh, when you look, he, he may open his eyes and oh, uh, people are half asleep or they're not with me. So it's our, for the kirtan leader, the obligation here is to make sure people are with you, you know? And you know, that's that's a technique, even rock stars do it, they look at each other, okay, do this now. <laughs> right, so it's it's a, a catch the eye, it's it's a, a nod, it's a whatever it is, you know, it's a smile, whatever, okay? So we'll go through this, and we'll rip through this as best as we can, and if we go too fast, then, um, Okay, you can give out summons, I guess. <laughs> yes. Okay, but I will ask this, you know, in regards to kirtan and standards. How many people drive a car? Are there some standard rules that you have to follow? Oh, yes. yes. Okay, well, why don't you just go wild on there, be a hot rod, and just do it. Burn rubber. You know, why not? You know, it feels good. Why not? But we have some standards. For different reasons, safety most likely, uh, you know, easy on the vehicle, all those kind of things. Okay, standards are necessary. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, workshop topics: Is there a need for standards? Who sets the standards? Why do we chant? Where do we chant? Participant roles and responsibility. Kirtan content inclusivity and conclusion. That's what we're going to cover today, hopefully. All right. Is there a need for standards? Can I get some answers on that? Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. Great. And <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> why is there a need for standards? For who? Things stay bona fide and keep its spiritual potency. Things stay bona fide. Two things you said, and it keeps its potency. I like it. What else? Keeps people safe. Keeps people safe. Safe. Good point. Yeah. We have the mercy of the Acharyas. Mercy of the Acharyas. Very good. Excellent. Yes, Prabhu? There's a foundation and basis. There's a, to establish a foundation and basis. Uh huh. Good. Yes? No offenses. No, no offenses. Oh, to avoid offenses? Sure, sure. Why not? I think it's a good idea. Give same experience like all the multiple centers. So Everyone can have the same experience. If you go to uh, Prague, you know, the Istan Center there, that they're doing the same thing. Oh, I understand this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if you go to Timbuktu, same thing. Anywhere you go, you there's some expectation. You go to McDonald's, which we don't, but there's some expectations. <laughs> the quality of the food, the washrooms are always clean, yeah. you know, and things like standards are important, yes. Okay, that's very, very good point. Yeah, people can kind of latch on to it and pick up on, on what to do very easily. Yes, go ahead. We keep the movement together. 
to keep it going with the other, yeah, yeah, some kind of unity is, is established by doing that. Yes? It keeps the kirtan from going too rajasic. Too rajasic, right. Yeah, so there's an implication there that when you do things with uniformity and according so, to some authority guides that it's sattvic, right? It is sattvic, yes. Prabhu in the back. It removes room for speculation. Removes, yes, no speculations. That's good, that's good. We will talk about creativity and, you know, I mean this morning during Tulsi Puja, I did ask Chambhavan, can you do the worm? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if everybody would like that, but I'll just, I'll just establish a nice little. Okay, let's, let's take a look. Okay. You know the worm. Did he? <laughs> yeah, he did. Very good. Amen. <laughs> Uh, okay, the Islam Kirtan Standards Workshop presents Keystone Cops. It's time for the air hanger. Sometimes we're sloppy. <laughs> Some of these matters. All of us. 
All of us? Our yeah, the Eternals. So I was looking for the Brumbra, mm -hmm. the PP. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's go. Shiloh <laughs> Prabhupada is the answer that's given here. Can uh, somebody read this? Uh, Bruce, go ahead. Within the Vaishnava standards, which I have put forward, lies the spiritual strength of our movement. Yeah. Next, uh, someone else, Prabhu? In this age of Kali, practically everyone is like Jagai and Madai, but the Sankirtan movement inaugurated by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is still flowing like a great river, inundating the entire world. Yeah, it's not a beautiful phrase, so it's flowing like a great river. How many people <coughs> will go to the confessional and say, I'm like Jagai and Madai? Yes? All right. Okay, some of you are not. Well, your feet. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to Montreal. I always have to do a plug in for a I'm going to Montreal, and if I find Montreal quite suitable, I shall call you and some other students to assemble there to practice Sankirtan in a systematic way. So Prabhupada did that. There were three great, wonderful couples. You may know who they are. Prabhupada's disciples who met in Montreal during the time that Prabhupada had visa issues. And he stayed there for about six weeks, if I'm not mistaken, in Montreal, near McGill University. And he taught them how to do a nice kirtan. And I know the very house where that is. And the professor of music at McGill bought that house, <laughs> eventually. Um, why? The, the devotees were going to be dispatched to London. And Prabhupada's idea was the people in London would appreciate it if the kirtan is done nice. Basically that. Okay. Of course, chanting Hare Krishna does not require any artificial artistic sense, but still, if the procedure is presented rhythmically, then the people may be attracted more by the transcendental music. And we'll go on. Thank you. Yeah. It's important to remember why do we chant and where are we chanting? I guess the location. Okay. Um, let's see if it answers it. Why do we chant? Let's get the answers here. <laughs> uh, for cleansing, to cleanse the mirror of the heart. Okay, everyone knows this. Let's do read it together, all right? If you chant always 24 hours without any payment, so it will cleanse. It will cleanse your heart so that you will be able to analyze your position, God's position, God's position the world's position. And everything will be nicely clear and illuminated. Wonderful. And 67 still applies. Okay, I'm going to see if I can. Again, all of us, the dirty things in the heart of a country's soul are the root of all trust to him. These dirty things of fruitful work and every philosophy can be removed only by association with the Supreme Power. Shilaparopati. Okay, Chief of Dharma, Mahatma, Famous meeting. What time is this? San Francisco, 19. Was it 71? Okay, perhaps. I know that everyone's blissful here. <laughs> the importance of chanting today, Hare Krishna. Uh, again, together. <clears throat> my, my dear King, although Kali Yuga is an ocean of loss, there is still one good quality about this age. Simply by chanting the Hare Krishna Mama Mantra, Mama Mantra. one <laughs> 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 Mountain Mama of Denver, right? <laughs> Going down Country Road. Okay, you know, most of you know the song. Okay. Actually, we should get more stress. In the worst, the incarnation of sound vibration. But whenever there is a possibility of installing deities and strictly following the regulations of worship, we shall do this. But the essential part of our activities is to worship the sound incarnation. Now, what do you think about that? Yeah, well. mm -hmm. Now, we put a lot of emphasis on deity worship. We spend money on flowers, and, uh, jewelry, uh, you know, 
clothing, costumes, all the time. And we're very, let's say, formal about our puja, you know? But then, uh, that is secondary, according to what Prabhupada says. And I, I'm not belittling this practice. It is one of our nine processes of devotional service. But worshiping the Lord in the sound incarnation, according to quotes here, play, uh, let's say, we, we pay a little more attention to that. Or if we can, we can improve. The room for improvement we are talking about. So what do you think about that? What, room? Anything? Yeah, Drew. Me? Yeah, anybody. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I feel like uh, deity worship, um, it's very popular among certain communities that yes. is kind of out of touch for local people sometimes. Right. And so kind of, I, I agree with what Prabhupada is saying that we should definitely put most of our eggs in the kirtan basket. Yes, good, good, good. Yeah, so a little more emphasis can go in this direction. It's important. And reaching out to people is really important. Deities are important, but people are also important. Deities, and let's call people devotees, because everyone's a devotee. Yes? Yes. 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 <coughs> or the demons. Which one of the Ds? <laughs> in the early days, there was carnies, those demons, right? You have enough. You have enough. Herbie, you've done those kind of things in the past. <laughs> All right, let's move on. We're doing good. Where do we chant? Uh, different venues, uh, such as temple or in the public. Main kirtan venues, that's pretty obvious. In the public, private-ish. <laughs> Sunday feast, festivals, outdoor, harinam, outdoor outreach programs. Yoga studios, whatnot. Morning program, that's in the temple, unless we go to the beach sometimes. We have morning programs at the beach. Uh, special classes, house programs. Yeah, there's no limit. You can go anywhere. Prison. Uh, somebody would like to volunteer? Jumbo Bomb, go ahead. There is a distinction between street kirtan and temple kirtan. In street chanting, Libra liberties. liberties may be taken to make the chanting more attractive to the public, such as additional instrumentation, <laughs> dance choreography, such as the word. and attractive dress. The same applies to festivals and Sunday feast kirtans. Okay, there you go. It, it, it would appear that you know, there's times when we have to be a little bit formal and less casual, and there's opportunities to be casual. How many of you have been to like a public venue and there's like a big party, maybe it's fireworks in the city or something like that, everyone's just going crazy. New Year's Eve, you know, it's, everyone's in a good mood. And you can, I hate to use this term, ham it up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and just to accommodate people, right? And, uh, different instrumentation. We're not so favorable to having djembe's in the temple, but it might be appropriate outdoors during the Ratyatras, for instance, because they've got a lot of power to them, you know? And it, and it can work, uh, as long as there's synchronicity, you know? You, you work with the, the Nganga players, don't often like the djembe's, and vice versa. But if you learn to rehearse there's something called rehearsals, then you get a good result and say, hey, we're just going there and just bang away. Oftentimes, kirtans are just a big bash. Yeah. Is there, is there like a set reason why not the djembe? <laughs> why not the djembe? Because, well, to keep it sacred, holy, traditional, and so on like that. Yeah, in the temples, yeah. But it's, it's permissible, we're saying, an outdoor event. Okay. Yeah. And it gets, we will talk about it, it gets a little overwhelming sometimes. Lots of drums, lots of cartels. And some of you felt, I'm not going in there. We'll talk about that. <clears throat> For regular temple kirtans, however, the need to attract the public is absent, and thus temple kirtans are stricter when it comes to melodies, instrumentation, and so on. That's from a little booklet uh, that we put together called the Harinam Eiriki Okay? Again, beautiful formation. Um, everyone looks great. The importance of, of public chanting. Uh, would somebody else like to volunteer to read this? 
Chirag, go ahead. A devotee should always be very kind to the general public and instruct in Krishna consciousness because that is the only solution for getting out of the clutches of mind. That is real humanitarian work. Okay, great. It's just another point, and we'll move on. Look at these ecstatic people. Temple Kirtan. And how many people have been in ecstatic kirtans? I think not so long ago, like just a few hours ago, perhaps. <laughs> Didn't we let it all hang out? Prabhupada specifically described how kirtan should be done in ISKCON temples. Regarding instruments for temple kirtans, karkal and murdanga are sufficient. There is no need for other instruments. And some people are going to go, oh, no harmonium. By the way, harmoniums are not traditional. They came from Germany or France, one of those two points, in the 18th century. You know, so it's been newly introduced. Of course, people in India have taken it up like crazy, like tea, and the British can with tea. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, it is something that is done for bhajans. There's a distinction, right? So uh, uh, if they, I, I have a little bit of a beef about that. Uh, beef ham, I've got my wrong Pet <laughs> <laughs> peeve. Um, it's um, it, it, it's a little disturbing to me when people just sit on the floor for kirtan, and it's just an RT time. Why can't we just you know do everyone goes to the gym for a workout? Uh, why can't we just work out in front of God? He doesn't mind his sweat. <laughs> okay, the Samsara Daba prayer, everyone knows that. Uh, this is what we chant for Mangala Arti. Um, Samsara Daba Nandani That's all we can't do that time for anymore. <laughs> and, then, and then it's Shri Krishna Chaitanya. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Morning to you. And Jai Waiter Maharaj just talked a little bit about the you know, different ragas that are there for different times of the day. Very few people know them. But that morning to is something Prabhupada set as a standard, right? So know it and use it. <laughs> the Guru Prayer, that's what he called it. And this is from the Kirtan Standards book. There's a book this thick of quotes from Prabhupada and other devotees. We, have, we do have a ministry for Kirtan Standard, a ministry for Kirtan. And so we have resources. <clears throat> the Guru Prayer, that's what he called it, Sri. Krishna Chaitanya Panchatapa Mahamantra, then Hare Krishna Mahamantra, nothing else. Okay? <coughs> so, what we're talking about, you don't need Jai everybody to death. <laughs> and uh, so, th those are some kind of uh, directives Prabhupada did give. He didn't necessarily, uh, he never did Jai this or that or you or me. Uh, he just didn't do it. And so, he just said this is sufficient. Then one of our sannyasis asked Prabhupada, he said, okay, so just chant the mantra of the deity, you know, very briefly. And he gave it a, he nodded that it was okay. Just that the main thing is, don't preoccupy yourselves with everything else. Like Prabhupada never chanted, me I go, or how do you go? He didn't do it. Somehow or other, he let it fly. Uh, so we are going to get to a topic here. What's what's cool to chant, what's bona fide, and what you can get away with, and what is not cool at all, all right? Say so like Jai Guru Dev, specifically he said a few times, you don't chant Jai Guru Dev, because it's impersonal. Uh, the Guru has a name, and since we don't, you know, in front of their lordships in our Islam temples, specify people's names other than Krishna and so on, and of course, we love Prabhupada, so from the Jaya, we can excuse that, but no Jaya for good day, okay? And I'm going to stick with for that one. I'll go to someone, Prabhupada, like that. Okay, the Gorarti song, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Panchita Okay, we'll come to nothing else, go ahead. 
The basic pattern should be followed. The chanting of Sri Krishna Chaitanya or Panchatukva Mahamudra should only be three times, not more. Okay? During the RT. Three times Panchatukva Mahamudra. These are standards. Otherwise, someone can go on forever and ever and ever. Never get to the Mahamudra. Here, <laughs> notice the Hare Krishna people. That means we chant Hare Krishna. And it's easy for people to follow. Newcomers have a hard time with, with the Panchatukva. So, anyways, different reasons for keeping it simple. No one should sing a bhajan unless all the devotees know what the song means. Mm-hmm. So it's good to provide it's good to provide, you know, song books or you have something on the screen so everybody knows, oh, this is what I'm singing. Many of us have chanted for many years, but do we know what it means? Because we don't take the time to look at the translation. It's a good idea to look at your translations. All right. Uh, I appreciate when, uh, I think that uh, in Kalakanta where you started, you know, just putting the screen up there. And, are you here? Oh, you left to deserve the entertainment for time. Um, yeah, so there, there's always a screen available and people can follow it, follow it real easy. So provide for your congregation, for your public. You know, be nice to them, okay? One of Prabhupada's favorite words, nice. Everything should be nice. Sugar and spice. Okay, public here time. <clears throat> Harinam Eva Kevalam specifically describes how kirtan should be done in public. Oh, this is the book we we'll copy. In street public chanting, liberties may be taken to make the chanting more attractive to the public, such as additional instrumentation, we went to this dance choreography, and attractive dress. We actually gave you some little hints on what choreography could look like. You can get some ideas from the Manipuris, because uh, Manipur in India has been a traditionally very strong Vaishnava settlement. And uh, there's different things I've seen with the pandas in Puri, they go back and forth, back and forth, you know, when the deities come out. So it's a simple move and everyone can follow, okay? Okay, the people in general can be reached very well by the distribution of our literatures and by the propagation of Sankirtan in the streets. These are our two redundas for reawakening the sleeping conditioned souls. So we keep that in mind. It's the message that we get, the literature, and also the sound vibration. We can also talk a little well, later about prasadam. These are three things that was our mandate, prasadam. We deliver sacred food, sacred wisdom, sacred sound. How do you like that? It's a triumph. That's what it is. Conditioned soul. That's what you need. All right. The most important aspect of our preaching is kirtan. Induce the people to chant. That is the only thing. Then everything else will follow. In fact, people are going to stomach your nice presentation. The dance is nice. It's sweet. It's attractive. It's uh, the sound is beautiful. You know, uh, and they feel entertained, and uh, they're drawn to it. You know, um, have you ever met uh, preachers on the street corner? Jesus! You know that kind of stuff. <laughs> like if we did the same thing, Krishna! Oh, or don't know where it's hot. Uh, you know, that kind of message and uh, very fiery, fire and brimstone that doesn't apply. And we got to come on really soft, like really easy with people. Uh, people are sensitive and, you know, go in like a needle and go out like a plow. That's how you, you know, I deal with phrase by Srila Prabhupada. Okay? Okay. To advance in spiritual life, the beginning of Shraddha, faith. Shraddha means respectful. Oh, it is nice. That is called Shraddha. My special instruction to you all is that you practice Sankirtan very rhythmically and and in a responsive way. That means one should chant first and others should follow him. Okay, now some <coughs> countries where I travel to, they don't understand receive and respond. It gets frustrating. If I had hair, I'd pull it out. <laughs> but, you know, you have to be patient with people and get them to understand. And these are smart people, too, by the way. You know? 
So it is this uh, Shravanam and Kirtanam that is something that we can provide as a you know, lessons on how to chant in a traditional way. Okay, so some of these devotees you might know, roles and responsibilities for, for the chanters and the responders and so on like that. Uh, let's look at the three main roles and responsibilities involved in engaging in kirtan. Okay, there's the leaders, they chant. So they sing and everyone else is quiet. You follow the tune, otherwise, how will you get it, right? If it's just a big mambo jumbo experience that no one will ever catch the melody, right? Supporting musicians, the people that back up with the instruments and the board and the responders are those who, uh, respond with their voices, okay? So we're just kind of breaking it up like that. Before we detail the practical responsibilities of these roles, let's discuss the spiritual quali qualities all roles must share. Can, can somebody, okay, you, you've done the rerun for this. Sorry. That's okay, we're pretty good. It's your comment, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> we're just having fun. <laughs> okay. Um, Enthusiasm, how important is that? Lowliam, apimuliam, you know, I mean, different, uh, Rupa Goswami and others talk about how important enthusiasm is to apply in the matter of advancing in Krishna consciousness. Okay, so if somebody's leaving the kirtan, what does it mean if they're, again, like they're in their little bubble? Um, it's all about me, isn't it? Weren't you talking about all about me? Right? It's not all about. Mm -hmm. It's about everybody. It's a uh, it's me turned upside down with the the, the M upside down. It's the we that we we must apply. Okay, let's go ahead. Everybody knows this lady, divine lady, this divine man. For the present, you may join the Sanker Dome Party because I know that your presence will enliven everyone. And that's a personal letter to you on the day. She had power. Her presentation was wonderful. Uh, but she was no, she didn't have a, a, just a great voice. She had spiritual power, right? That's what's gonna draw people. I know every year, like in Canada, we go for July the 1st is Canada's birthday. And we go to the capital city, Ottawa. And it's such a wonderful time. People come and we just watch devotees you know, in uh, very sincerely chanting and dancing, and especially folks from Iran, for some reason or another, they stand there and they just can't believe what they're seeing. Uh, but they pick up on, the, there's a purity there, and it's, uh, yeah, we show off a little bit, but we become like children, you know, uh, in the public like that. And we can do it on Canada's birthday, you know. And just to let you know how we stretch it sometimes, there's been occasions on that occasion where we go, say the anthem, sing the national anthem, and we'll do it for them. And then we go right back to the Maha Mantra. <laughs> we'll do something like, Krishna, 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 hey, Canada, 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 hey. So we just do it to, to satisfy, but we just get back into where we're, the position we want to be in. So. We're just giving a little license to the public venues, right? Is that a problem for anybody? No. <laughs> we have to cater to what people kind of want, isn't it? All right. Here on standards, whenever there were guests, Prabhupada almost always sang the standard Hare Krishna Devan or some similarly very simple melodies. Do you all know it? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Oh, that's it. And uh, has anybody ever seen Hair? Yeah. The movie production? It was done in 78, I think. You know, am I right about yeah. that? Were you in it? Uh, no. Okay. Anyways, the, the standard melody there is similar. Uh, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. It's kind of a little jazzy, but very similar. And that Broadway production, the or origin of that movie, 
defined the 60s. So we were very much present. We were a, you know, a fixture in at that time in the 60s. Okay. So maybe that can happen again. Um, but anybody, you know, can I pick on you? Would you like to read this story here about, it has to do with uh, Narimani, the personified ragas. Oh, is it okay? Can you read it okay? Yeah, you see, maybe not me. Okay. Um, uh, once, while traveling throughout the universe, Narada came to a planet inhabited by many beautiful people. They lived in, a, in gorgeous palaces, dressed in splendid clothes, and were ever engaged in singing, playing on musical instruments. However, they were all deformed. Some had no feet, some no ankles, and some no knees. Some had twisted hips, some had shriveled thighs, some had disfigured torsos, some had loose teeth, some had hunched shoulders, some had bowed heads, and some had no necks. Astonished, Narada asked them who they were. The people unhappily replied, we are the personified ragas. We have become deformed by the sage Narada. Mad with love, he sings the wrong melodies and the wrong times, <laughs> with the wrong notes and without proper rhythm. In this way, he has broken the limbs of our bodies. <laughs> Narda inquired from the ragas how his fault could be rectified. They directed him to propitiate the goddess Saraswati. He then learned from her the science of music and became an unrivaled musician. Yeah. So I just want to do a little plug-in for that everything should sound nice, you know. One of the another peeve is the different pitches that people get during the kirtan. Somebody leads the kirtan, and some of it usually is a few guys that just shoot it way up there that nobody else can follow. They're in their own little world, and then it kind of people you lose a grip on the community. You know, and it can sound very often. There are some people in our communities that are tone deaf. You know what I mean by that? And I usually tell them, could you sing a lot softer? You know, maybe take some voice lessons. And I'm serious about it, you know? Don't spoil it, okay? Don't spoil the whole thing. Okay, so here we go. The devotee, by service mood, bhaktiya, only can gradually know the personality of God. So property is the thing. That's the move. That's what we're talking about. Spiritual qualification. Srila Prabhupada didn't usually speed up the kirtan to frenetic pitch and then stop and start again. He gradually built it to a steady, medium, slow rhythm. This gave a chance to enter into the kirtan and meditate on the chanting. The melody was simple, and he didn't change it from the kirtan standards book. Okay? You understand what I'm saying? Sometimes everyone, ooh, 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 they're like on sugar. And then after five minutes, you have then just to stop and then kind of start again, a slow. And Prabhupada's method was, uh, in terms of the tempo, start nice and easy and slow, rhythmically, and gradually build it up to a crescendo. And, uh, you know, like an explosion almost. Okay? All right. Okay. Matsi, would you like to? Kirtan played with a steady rhythm, allows for graceful dancing and melodious chanting, and can continue for hours without stopping. Okay, and would you want to do the honor one more? Humility means that one should not be anxious to have the satisfaction of being honored by others. And this is from the 13th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Again, the quality, the mood behind leading the kirtan and responding to Okay, um, who else would like, go ahead. So if you have talent for musical achievement, that is nice. But if you nourish some idea of becoming famous by playing some music, that will be a source of frustration. The end. Jai, Thank you. A good kirtan leader personally tastes the nectar of the holy name. Jai, Haripol. Some people have been really tasting it. And helps others to relish it also. He does not just stand with his eyes open. <laughs> he interacts with other devotees, Hare Krishna, and encourages them to dance and chant enthusiastically. So 
some of these are famous caricatures. Listen, sweet and melodious. Okay? Let's listen. Close your eyes on this one. You heard it before, I'm sure. Yeah. <coughs> eyes closed. discuss that a little bit. We got one minute to discuss this. Yes, but we'll keep them off the floor. Keep them off the floor. Okay. Don't break them. Don't break them. That's a good idea. Keep them organized. Keep them organized in a row, whatever. Mm -hmm. Don't be careless with them. Don't be careless. That's a general rule. Yeah. And if you have cartels, usually they're made of brass. All of them want some of them. A little bit. Okay. I was going to say, keep a designated spot. A designated area for them, right. Yes, bro. Not sliding them with the uh, harmonium along the floor. Don't, yeah, because it'll break the floor. Yeah, just lift it. <laughs> yeah, respect the floor, respect the harmonium. Yes. Okay, good. We'll move along. Quality versus quantity, less is more. You've heard that phrase before. Okay, supporting musicians, too loud. Is that familiar? Yes. yes. It's a problem everywhere in my travels, and I do go to two different continents, and it is really a problem. You know, too many mordongos or too much amplification. And tone it down. You know, but some people, you know, how many people used to go to rock concerts? How are your ears doing these days? Yeah. Uh, okay. How about noise like Harley Davidson's? Uh, I've traveled many countries, and people at least. Yeah, you're done. Okay, great. What does it do for your ears? I've got a really good helmet. Oh, you got a good helmet. <laughs> so the solution is good, good helmets. Most of the time in our temples, the instruments are played much louder than the singer's voice. So the main point is let's hear the mantra. That's what's really going to purify. And the instruments back up the voices, right? Uh, often only the musical instruments are heard, and the actual glorification of the Lord is barely heard. 
according to the rules, instruments should be subordinate to the actual singer. Yay. In Kirtan, all musical instruments, including the Merdana and Kaikos, must be played in a mood of serving the Kirtan, not controlling it. <laughs> Supporting musicians, here we go, let's see what happens here. We need to play the instrument thoughtfully, not like these two monkeys. <laughs> yeah, they don't, they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> On the other hand, let me see what else is there. Okay, carbon five. I think we'll get a close up on this. I was in Liberty Nathan actually on the second initiative, and I was really looking carefully at Artifacts, you know, playing his instruments. It's written. Thank you. Krishna consciousness means compassion, so we have to be aware that many people are sensitive to metallic sounds. There are many, I was in New Orleans, and we, uh, we, uh, our little drama troupe was bumped by some professional kirtan group, and so we were kind of ticked off, okay? So I had to just like, make our, uh, our group a little bit sad, passive. I had to listen, you're in your costumes, why don't we just go downtown? And we'll just have kirtan together. And then we did that. All dressed up in costumes. It was so good. The cartels were a little loud. When it got to the horses who carried those coaches, they uh, got pretty wild. Yeah. Up and we had to tone it down. So many animals are very sensitive. And also human beings to the sound of the high pitch. Okay? So keep it at some kind of control. Like, <coughs> This is true. Many reports of people living here does because the cartel's claim causes physical pain. We don't want that to happen. We brought them in. We made such an effort to bring them in. And then we're, you know, in our presentation, we say, go away, go away. And that confuses people. You wanted me to come? I'm come. Now you're asking me to go away? Doesn't make much sense, does it? It's not very hospitable. Let's put it that way. Redundant cartels should be played together harmoniously to enhance the transcendental sound vibration of the Holy Names. Cartels should be chimed sweetly by the Gopi's ankle bells. They should not be clanged together like the skin lids. No. <laughs> I mean, of course, there are people very trained in Orissa, they use the jumpas, you know, the wanderers. And I, I was at one function. Uh, I was, you know, kind of a, in the queue with a bunch of celebrities and so on. And, and they, there were 12 men playing these, so in time. It was so beautiful. Personally, I'd love to see a rock yatra where there's three chariots, some Merdanda players in one area and cartels, these wampers in another, and maybe Nagish, no, what a, Nagish was, you know. Nah, that's what I'm what, There's so much Chennai, Chennai. Yeah, different flavors would be nice. Hello, LA. New York. <laughs> okay, uh, we all know the Olivia song. Just, just listen to Cartels. Close your eyes again and hold Chant this mantra together in uh, the way of praising the Murdanga as Balram. What it means? Thank you very much. That was very good. We have very little time left. Uh, translation unto the Murdanga, the Supreme Brahman, formed as a clay drum which is infused with the sweet mellows of graceful enchantment and endowed with the thousands of transcendental qualities I bow down again and again. <laughs> These are worshipable, they're deities, basically the instruments that we play. Watch. Okay. Prabhupada, 
Sometimes we do stuff, we do see sometimes people pick up an instrument and midway through I'm tired and they just drop it. It's very dis I can't see the Rolling Stones doing that. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. Once you pick it up, you know you go for the long haul and just follow through to the end. Right? Okay, yet it happens, okay? Supporting musicians that quit, okay? Uh, hang in there. <laughs> Don't give up. <laughs> Let's, Let's keep this. And then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired. I'm bush. <laughs> we should know our capacity. Know what you can do before you take up the instrument. We're just talking about very practical things and. One year we went to Cannon City, somewhere near Colorado, if I'm recalling, with the bus tour. And I was with Nana Ron, and the, we had two buses, one for the boys, one for the girls. And it was just supposed to be a day of rest at a park. So at this particular park, uh, we were just taking it easy. And the park across the street, the local marching band was out there. Uh, I assumed that they were there, like, cheerleading for the getting ready for the big game, football game. So I said to Mom, yeah, this is what we should do, we should be practicing. We should be rehearsing. So it looks good, you know? Of course he didn't, he didn't argue it, you know? But this is what they need to do sometimes instead of everyone just coming together, picking up any instrument and banging away. And <laughs> that we should be a little bit, let's say, authorized. Like it's not a bad idea Every temple has like a music director, or one or two or three, that call the shots. As to you know who can do what. It says, no, 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 I'm sorry, we didn't practice with it. That, that type of thing, you know. We take some lessons, we offer lessons, and temples should offer lessons, and then it sounds good, right? It's like that in churches, they have music directors. They, there's some control in a good way. What do you think? Agree? Okay, I'm not sure what we want to do with this uh, because our time is actually up. But there's a lot more to show you. And, uh, but so far, I hope that we got something out of this. Uh, let's just go through one resolution. Just to let you know that our leaders are not sleeping behind the wheel when we have meetings. We do discuss important things. Okay, the sound system should be adjusted so that it sounds clear, sweet, and attractive, as opposed to overly loud, distorted, or painful. That's an important resolution, isn't it? And the reason why it's there, because discussions were up about <coughs> how this is a major issue in many of our temples, just too loud. How do, you, how do you control or monitor a temple that has some of these problems? So I, it's up to the management, you know? And we're just suggesting some of these uh, regulations and standards could be applied. And uh, because I want to, I like to stick to the time, uh, just like to say that uh, there are resources for standards. Um, you, you, you write about them. And, um, um, and you could even take this if you want to your temple and you can do something like what I've been doing now. Like, you have enough, you'd be a perfect guy for doing the job, you know? or some of you temple leaders, you know, we're a little bit musically inclined can just present this to, and there's a lot of good stuff yet to come, like uh, what you chant and what not to chant, okay. Okay, so um, is, I guess that's it. Do we have any comments or feedback? Or? Yes, there probably is. Yeah, oh, um, there's the good Okay, so I, you, okay, yeah, right. the point about the IPs, so some devotees would chant like Prabhupada's Pranam Mantra before they chant the Panchatva Mantra. Yeah. Yeah. Is that okay? I mean, obviously Prabhupada. I do it. it. And I do it because to me, Prabhupada is everything, and he is sitting there in the Murti form, and I, everything begins with his mercy. So that's what I do. I don't think there's a hard and fast rule for that. Thanks for the question, though. Yep. 
I was kind of kind of on a similar point. The temples where a lot of us are from, uh, if I were to just one day not chant Namo Vishnupadaya, Namaste Sarasaya, all the devotees would be like, what are you doing? Yeah. Okay, with the program. Yeah, we're not suggesting you shouldn't chant that. Mm. Or well, with saying? the other things too, like if I don't chant Jai Gurude, or I don't chant Jai Radha. Well, Vira. therefore they need this course. <laughs> they need <this> seminar. <laughs> That we, we need to be informed of what are the standards by our founder Acharya. Mm -hmm. That's really the theme here. What did Prabhupada want? That, that and inclusivity. Mm -hmm. And also, if we're, we want to show our loyalty to Shiva Prabhupada, his divine grace, then we'll uh, get informed and educated as to what his wishes were. Okay? So, therefore, this is important. Yes. Uh, so, where can we do it? that some or many of these are not being followed. Okay, this is what we did. Um, this is what I did in Toronto some years ago. <clears throat> we decided that if you want to lead Kirtan, you have to take the course. Wow. And, and it's easy to get a certificate. It's not a big deal, but you have to take the course. So we know you're in tour. Like, uh, anybody know Ajahn Neil? You know, he's a you know, jazzy you know, singer. He's like a uh, lead. Aretha Franklin answer to his group <laughs> and bail form. And, uh, you know, he goes a little wild once in a while, and I just have to hang him up. Excuse me, remember the course we took? He said, like, yeah, yeah, that's good. We have a good relationship. So it's like that. If you could get a couple of monitors or music directors in there that go around and just watch that everything's going on. So number one, you know, have something like this in your temple. Have a, have a seminar like this so everyone's informed. And those who lead the kirtan, it's, you know, lead kirtans who want to lead, they must take this course. Okay. Otherwise, you can't lead. And they'll come. They will come because they want to lead. And, uh, you know, what else? Yeah, try to keep some control on things by having a couple of monitors, those who are there to always remind everyone what the standards are. And there are, you know, people go away, Rade, 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 and you'll get a time of excuse. Prabhupada didn't want Rade, 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 and another Rade, and a few more. He just didn't want it. He didn't like it. What happened to Krishna? Did you throw him in the ditch? <laughs> you know, and, and uh, even Nitai Gaur and versions of Gaur Nityananda, Rade, Rade, um, Prabhupada said to that, well, I chant Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gada, Narasimha, Sri Gaura Bhakta Vrinda, and I will go back to God. In other words, he said, you can do what you want to do, but I want to go back to God. In. So this is where kind of concoctions come in, mm -hmm. and they are, have become standard. And like I said earlier, some things you can kind of get away with. During this time, people did go to Nityananda, and we will have. Uh, they did Gordon Nita yeah, uh, Gordon that came in 1974 I remember when it was introduced and I said where did that come from Prabhupada didn't teach us that but he let it slide so that's why it's good to get familiar with what's cool what's not cool and what we can get away with <laughs> okay so those are some directions Directives, I guess you could say, and guidelines, and we couldn't complete it here, but we can come to your temple, perhaps, and uh, present it to you. Usually, oftentimes, it's a four-hour presentation, and we did include, uh, you know, dance. We did include harmonium lessons. I, I went to Cuba, and I did it there. Uh, harmonium lessons, redundant lessons, cartel lessons for the devotees there. We took our time on it. And they really appreciated it. Yeah, so. Um, get some voice lessons. I think it's a real good idea. You know, some people are tone deaf. In our temple in Toronto, there's about three or four people, and they all are doing it at the same time. <laughs> and it drives me nuts. <laughs> okay, and yeah. But they're good about it. <laughs> Anything else? Okay, great. No problem. People have questions for you. Thank you. I'm offended, but no. <laughs>